Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make your very own fire station for all of your city building needs. However, this is only part one of four separate tutorials. You see, in the other tutorials, I will show you. In the other tutorials, I'll be showing you how to make your very own fire engine, your very own fire helicopter, and I'll even show you how to make the inside of your fire station, including the reception area, Area, the firefighters lounge, the workout room, the locker room, wee, and also the inside of the garage. What more could you possibly want? Boop. Beep. Boop. Beep. I do hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box, which would be very important as this is a multi-part tutorial series. We'll be making the entire fire station, including the outside building, which is this tutorial right here, the inside, the fire engine, and of course the helicopter. So stay tuned for all of those. But without any further ado, let's get started. So before we begin building everybody, here are all of the materials that you will need to make your fire station. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. The amount of ground space required to make the fire station is a 40 by 31 block area on the ground. Do feel free to make this giant white grid in your world if you do feel as though it will help you plan out your build. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, make sure that you got all that stuff, make sure you're ready to make it, make sure you got somewhere to make it, and once you are ready, we can begin. Step one, my firefighting friends, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made the grid. Begin by placing a row of 15 terracotta moving backwards from the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Leave a gap of one going right, and then place twelve white concrete coming up from the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Extend that twelfth block to the right again by twelve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then extend downwards by 5. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like this. I want you to then connect that fifth block that we just extended down. Connect it all the way going left like this to form a solid shape. And then I want you to take the upper corners of the white concrete area and I want you to extend them each backwards by 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then you can extend that 13th block across and you can simply just connect it all the way over to the other side instead of counting out again. I want you to take this back corner here and I want you to connect this down to the ground also like this. So we're going for a very parallel shape to what we have on the front. And then what I'm also going to suggest that you do is you take the corner here on the front of the build also and you connect this backwards and also up as well. And then you can even connect that block across too. So we have a very large 3D Q shape. Or it's actually kind of a P as well, I think, if we look at it from the other side. But you guys get the idea. So once you have created this shape, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to first of all suggest that you completely fill in the back portion using white concrete. This can all just be filled in. There's no real reason to not fill it in at all. The left side of the build is actually a bit different. We are going to fill it all in, except we're going to use a layer of red concrete. And the red concrete is going to simply sit 
all the way around the outside, yet inside of the empty space that we have created. So if you can imagine, we've got this big empty space and just on the outside of it, a huge layer of red concrete like this. And this can all be filled in with red concrete, as I say. And you do have the choice to and options to add windows and stuff later on. Although I would highly suggest doing that after you have done the inside. It's much easier to add windows once you know what's going to be going behind them. So this is what we kind of have so far and honestly you can even fill the right side in too using white concrete. We'll probably be altering that a little bit later but that's perfectly fine. What we just want to have is something that should look like that. That is perfect ladies and gentlemen. I also want to add some details to the front of the build as well, as this is of course where the entrance is going to be and all of that. So all the way down at the bottom of the build, a doorway is going to go here. You can, if you like, preemptively kind of just like destroy this block here just to show that this is where the door is going to be. And on the other side of the door, we're going to place three white concrete. One, two, three. And on the last two white concretes, place glass pane. Place three rows of white glass on top, or white concrete on top, so that'll be one row, two rows, three rows, with black stained glass pane on top there. We already have one row of white concrete above these, so we only have to place two, so that'll be one and two. And then we can place our layer of black glass on top. And then we want to take this black glass and we want to extend them to the right by five using white concrete. One, two, three, four, five. And then finish up by placing two black glass in these positions. So this is what we'll sort of end up with as we approach this part of the build. And what we also want to do is we want to place red concrete in the bottom right hand corner of the uh, of the white concrete shape that we have just created and in addition to this we're going to want to extend this red concrete to the left by one two three four just like this i then want you to place a brick underneath that fourth block extend that brick left and then all the way down to the ground like this what you can then do is you can fill the rest of the white concrete part of the building in using white concrete. Now we know where the separation is between the bricks and the white concrete, we are able to just fill it all in, which we didn't know before. That's why we left it kind of empty. But the end effect that you're looking for should look exactly like this. So that's looking pretty cool. But this red concrete area is actually rather important. So I want you to extend the red concrete across and backwards towards the back of the build like this. So wrap it around. I also want you to make sure that the red concrete overhangs the back of the build by one row. Add another row of red concrete onto the side part of the red concrete so that we have two rows of red on the side, one row of red on the back, and also on the back as well, I want you to extend the red concrete inwards by two rows. So one, two. So it wraps around the back of the build a bit. You can then add another layer of red concrete directly on top of all that you have just placed, like this. And this is actually going to be, believe it or not, this is how we're going to access uh, the helipad. We're going to have a bit of a stair situation here later on. But we have one row of red on the front, two rows of red on the side, and we have one row of red on the back. Now it's important that we extend a row of brick blocks all the way down from the row of red concrete that we placed on the inside of the back portion of the build. And then you can just completely fill the rest of the back in using your white concrete. So you can see the back and the front, they don't line up together, which is absolutely fine. They are not supposed to. And you're going to end up with something that should look like this. I want you to extend the bricks 
one row towards you again. So just add another row towards you. And we're going to then extend the top of the bricks across the build by 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. To which we can then just connect that down to the ground and honestly you can just completely fill it in. I'll give you some window suggestions a little bit later on. And it makes sense to do them later on uh, as well and you'll see why when we actually get to that point. So let's just fill this rather large area in with bricks like that. Perfect. So now we kind of want to continue going on from where we left off which is right here of course at the end of this big wall. And we want to extend the top of the wall forwards by 18 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And of course you can then connect that down to the ground as well. And you can completely fill this wall in as well. We have a lot of open space on the front of the building. So I don't really find it necessary to add loads and loads and loads of windows everywhere else. But again, you can modify this as you go along. Now that we've created this rather large wall, most of the way around our build, we are going to take the top of the wall on the front of the build and we're going to extend it across. We're going to extend it all the way over to the left here and we're going to join it on the left as well, like this. So, you may remember earlier when we placed that rows of bricks, or that row of bricks I should say, it has now connected together. And we want to join the left side all the way down like this to give us a nice big open empty space. So this nice big open and empty space has to be filled in of course. If we start over here on the left where the bricks touch the ground, I want you to extend the bricks on the ground to the right by two. One, two. Extending inwards and to the right place black concrete yellow, then black, yellow, black, and yellow. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in total. You then want to place a brick block going forwards to the right, two more to the right. You now actually have a choice, ladies and gentlemen. You can have this middle garage open, and that's what I opted to do because it just seemed right, or you can place the collection of six blocks in a row on the ground again. But if you want an open garage, and you can do this uh, all over the place, you can connect these brick blocks upwards like this, and then you can place a row of alternating black and yellow concrete that adds up to six in front of and to the right of the bricks. So we already have one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. So basically that is the bottom of the garage door on the ground closed. This is the bottom of the garage door up in the air open. To which all you would then do is on the opposite side here, you would place three rows of bricks, one, two, three, and we can join these down to the ground. And then depending upon whether you want an open garage or a closed garage, I'll completely let you guys decide, but I'm going to have a closed one. You would then once again, you'd place a black concrete inwards and to the right or a yellow concrete. And then you do so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would simply add brick blocks to the right and in front to join it up. So that all seems like a very complicated process, doesn't it? But this is what we do. We just extend all of the bricks up and down so that they join together. This will create the separations in the build in between each particular compartment of the garages because of course we can choose to fill the inside of our fire station up with, garages, uh, with fire engines and other sorts of vehicles. We are going to place rows of light grey concrete in the middle of the rows of three bricks and the light grey concrete is basically just going to come up and it's going to sit directly in the middle and it's not going to touch the brick blocks on the left, right or above. So th basically this just adds a little bit of detail and it just makes the build look a little bit more mechanical. It makes it look as though that there's a little bit more going on. So something like that, right? 
On the closed garages, I'm going to recommend that you add brick slabs underneath the top layer of bricks because it makes it just look a little bit better later on. To make the garages, we're only missing one, uh, one important material and that is the pillar quartz block. So I've made the garages out of pillar quartz block and the pillar quartz block is meant to be placed sideways across the garage. Because you guys know how uh, how garage material looks, it kind of looks like the sheets of like metal pressed together and it kind of just has like those ridges in it, if that makes sense. So if you cover up all of the empty space, uh, where am I? If you cover up all of the empty space here using some pillar quartz block and that looks really nice. And then you destroy the four middle blocks up at the top here and replace it with glass, then you get a really cool looking garage. And we'll do that for both of the closed garages, and then I'll show you what you can do for the open garage if you like. So it completely depends on whether you're bothered about this detail that's going to be coming up next. You might not feel like including this, but I think it's kind of cool actually. But uh, again, you want to make sure that you have all of your pillar quartz block placed sideways with the glass at the top. And you can see it's, it's such a cool thing. Uh, those garage doors look so good to me. But what you can do is behind this garage door here, we have four rows of uh, pillar quartz block. So you can place, four, if you like, four rows of pillar quartz block behind the garage door. So if the garage doors open in a fashion that garage doors would typically open, which is kind of like upwards like this, they kind of like fling themselves upwards, don't they? Then you can place the garage door as if it's swung open and we need to place a bit of glass in here as well so glass block is more appropriate than glass pane just like that so that will give us an effect that should actually look really really cool so i'm actually really happy with that myself Let's fill the top of the fire station in. So the top of the fire station, I'm going to place a row of brick blocks around the inside of the top of the fire station. Now, the purpose of this is just to make it look a little bit chunkier. Now, that's pretty much all it's for. There's no other reason, really. So we can place some brick blocks going all the way around and they don't have to come across the side where all of the red is, so like this. And I'm also going to then fill the top of this in using smooth stone. That is the material of choice that I am using for the top of the fire station. Why am I using smooth stone? Uh, it provides a contrast. I think it goes quite well with brick. I think that it's, it, it's just a, light, a nice light color against the harsh red. You know, pick many reasons. You can use any colour that you like though. I mean, maybe you feel as though that the entire thing should be brick. Maybe you feel as though that the entire thing should be grey. Or white, or black, or yellow. You know, whatever. Pick, pick whatever colour you feel as though would look best. Again, I'm just going to say it. I think that the brick and the stone have a symbiotic relationship and I think that they both look together. They look quite nice together in my personal opinion. So we just want to have something which should look like this. And the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create the entrance onto the little, uh, onto the helipad area, which is what we have here. So to make the entrance, we actually just, we just need some doors pretty much and some quartz stairs. So the entrance is basically, if we start from the white concrete, we go, go to the right one, two, destroy destroy the two blocks above and then we basically just knock out all of this red concrete that we need to place a staircase so if the doors go here the quartz stairs go here so it actually blends very naturally in just like that it looks it looks pretty good in my personal opinion when it comes to the roof, I mean, it, it, there's so many ways to do the roof. It, it, it's completely up to you. Like, you could try and half the roof. I don't know if the roof even actually halves properly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Hang on. One, two, three, four. It does half. Perfect. So we can place, say, like a split up the middle of the roof if you like. Uh, 
and then you could say like add some glass into the top. I quite like the idea of using glass block in modern buildings, um, it just goes well I think. And of course I'm using black glass because that contrasts very nicely against the white. As I've said many times before, I don't, I don't think that uh, any material really does contrast as well against white as black or as black against white. Like uh, no matter which way you slice it, it just, uh, it just looks cool. So we want to have something which should look like this, and I think that we've got a pretty impressive building uh, ready for us now. Um, this here is where the entrance uh, entrance is, so I, I think I use smooth stone for the entrance, so I'm just going to chuck a smooth stone down here, and I'm going to place an oak door on top of it. I want to lay out some boundaries for the for the build, so some outside boundaries. To do the boundaries, we're going to need like terracotta, we'll need some oak leaves, some poppies, we need our black concrete, we need our yellow concrete, we might, well we will be needing some grey concrete as well. So this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some walls. First, the first wall that we're going to add is going to begin from the bottom left hand corner of the brick area of the garages. And we're going to dig out a row that is equal to the length of the wall to the left of us. And we're going to place a layer of terracotta in the ground, like this. Oh, and I guess we'll also be needing some smooth stone too. Okay, so the reason that we're going to use smooth stone is because we are going to create a path between the door, so this is where the entrance, where if you want to visit the fire station, um, you you come in this entrance. If you're a firefighter, then you will, uh, you'll probably like walk in here as well. There's like a front entrance. You can just walk around these places, I think. I think you can have tours and all sorts. So I'm going to, now that we have a path and we kind of have like a little dividing wall, I'm going to place a bit of oak leaves here, just in this corner. Just like two rows of three, something like that. Uh, I'm going to place some flowers, probably only about two rows or so, just directly in the middle. I don't really want to touch any boundaries. Um, I might also add a hedge here as well, just to the left, just to make it look nice. Just to kind of like make it look appealing so that people might actually want to walk into the station. Now what's also important is I want to extend the original terracotta wall to the back and around the fire station. And I do mean around it, we literally want to go all the way around it and we want to end up with a wall that is equal in length to the wall that we have all the way over there. And we want to double up on it too. So we want to add another row of terracotta directly on top of the original row. Just like this. You could make it, I'm thinking do I want to make it higher, but I reckon two blocks higher is enough, I think. I think any, any taller in it might look a little bit goofy, but that's my opinion. We will have a an area here at the back of the fire station that's just kind of like got nothing here now. Um, just like a load of grass. You can fill that in with like bushes if you like or something like that. It's really like a redundant area, it's not necessary. But this is the wall, you see that we've built a massive wall now around the fire station. I've got to tell you, I'm pretty happy with it. What else do we want to do? Well, the area in between this terracotta wall in the ground and that terracotta wall over here has to be filled up. We want to dig out a row that will connect the ends together like this. Let's dig out all of it, there we go. And we want to place alternating yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. You guys get the idea. So this is basically, nobody should be parking in front of this with their cars. Nobody should be blocking this, blocking this up with anything. This is an area that you keep free, you keep clear, so that people don't... I, I mean, if your house is on fire, you don't want some guy or some person, some thing, blocking the fire engine's way to actually get to your house. So that's why we've got this kind of like bumblebee looking line. I'm also going to dig out the entire area inside here and I'm just going to re refloor it pretty much. Like I'm, I'm just gonna turn all of the grass into, uh, into a road or kind of like a roady looking material. So I've been using grey concrete for my roads and I'm not going to fill in the inside of the fire station. That is going to be part two. But um, 
yeah, all of this is going to be grey concrete, ladies and gentlemen. And I think I'll hang in there with you to do it, because I don't think it will take too long. But believe it or not, once we have completed this particular portion of the video, we have actually done the entire outside of the station. I do feel as though that we've actually built this build in a little bit of a weird way. I, uh, yeah, it, it kind of does feel a little bit strange. I feel as though that we have done this in, uh, in kind of like a strange order. How we've built the building and everything, but the fact that it's all come together in the end I think is, uh, is quite nice. Despite the fact that things have been built in a bit of a weird way. But uh, I guess that's just how I build stuff. And we will, of course, in later tutorials, be filling this area in a little bit. We're, of course, filling it in with the grey concrete now, but we'll be adding some fire engines. And to the roof, we'll be adding a fire helicopter. And inside of the actual, like, the garages, the garages, the car hole, we'll be placing some fire engines as well. Or at least you have the option to. It's more than big enough to accommodate a fire engine you'll find on the inside. So we will have quite a nice filled fire a fire station and we'll also be doing all of the reception area and where the firefighters hang out and get dressed and changed and all of that so this is what we should be looking at at the moment ladies and gentlemen this is the entire build complete so this is what your fire station will look like once it has been 100 percent fully completed ladies and gentlemen it's a nice Modern feeling, yet somewhat retro in certain parts. Simple and clean feeling fire station, and it's completely ready to be filled up with the other tutorials. <coughs> I do hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all of these videos sent directly to your sub box which might be very important to you if you do plan on building the rest of the other parts of the fire station and not only that if you don't want to wait for the other tutorials to come out there are other city related builds that you can find on my channel which are in the card system the description below and the top of the comment section check out the city builds playlist it will be there for you and I will also link all of the fire related tutorials as well, the inside of the fire station, the copter and the engine, they will all be in the card system as well, the description below and I'll even leave those as well in the top of the comment section so do not worry I will make them very easy for you to find. Thank you so much for watching everybody, I love you all very much and I'll see you guys in the next one, goodbye!